Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out the Algo Laser Alpha 20 Watt Diode Laser. Is this the best diode laser you can buy to get into the hobby? Let's take a closer look and see if we can answer that question. As you can see, I put this machine through its paces today. We've got some raster engraves, some vector engraving. We did some slate coasters, some material tests, some cutting tests, some leatherette, lots of different items here today. So I've been using this diode laser in my shop now for about four months, and it's really been a great laser. So Algo Laser was nice enough to send this machine out to me at no cost, just for my review and feedback. Now, even though Algo Laser sent this machine to me, they're not paying me any money, and the only reason I accepted it was under the condition that I was able to give a 100% honest review. So here it is. So this is not gonna be a full-blown unboxing or technical spec review, because there are a lot of those out there. But what this is gonna be is my personal thoughts on this laser and realistic demonstrations of what it can do. I will say that the laser was extremely easy to put together and set up, and Algo Laser also has a lot of good startup videos on their YouTube channel for people that are new. Now let's get on to the testing. So whenever you get a new machine, the best thing to do is to run some material test cards to figure out how your specific machine react to your specific material. In this case, I ran an engraving test and a cutting test on some three millimeter basswood plywood. So here's the speed and power settings that I achieved during this test. I'll be using this info for the projects that I'll be making using this material. Up first is a raster engraved image. This is a technique that I don't have a lot of experience in, but I still wanted to see how the machine would handle it. Whenever you're doing a raster engraving, a lot of the quality is determined by the actual resolution and editing of the photo itself. So I'm still working on how to best achieve this effect. I also want to add that all the footage of the laser actually running is shot in real time. I'm not going to be speeding up or altering the timeline at all for the actual footage of the laser working. I'll make a few cuts here and there just so the video is not so long, but I just want to show an accurate representation of how the machine actually works and the speeds that it actually works in in real time. So overall, I'm really happy with how the Alpha handled the raster engraving tasks. Like I said before, an even better result can be achieved by taking some more time and altering the settings in Lightburn or editing the grayscale image. Next, we'll try out some slate coasters. I'm gonna go ahead and start off again with a material test just to try to dial in the settings. I ended up going with 130 millimeters a second and 50% power. You'll notice I made a couple positioning jigs out of some scrap plywood. This just helps place the graphics onto the coaster. And the second slot that I made is for the leatherette coming up. It's really nice having a machine with limit switches. Because of this, if I ever wanna make more of these coasters or batch out a larger amount, I can just create a jig, home the laser, and be able to accurately place all my graphics. Overall, I'm really impressed with the level of detail I was able to get on these slate coasters. Next up, we'll try some leatherette. This is basically a synthetic leather with a heat activated backing. It's really popular to make hats or to adhere to other clothing. You'll see that the small spot size on this diode laser really makes for a clean and detailed engraving. Next, we're gonna get into some cutting. And I found that this is really what separates diode lasers from CO2 lasers. In my experience in the past, diodes just did not have the power to cut anything substantial. And that is something that I always thought was lacking with these lasers. This is quarter inch or four and a half millimeter birch plywood. I started cutting it at four millimeters a second at 100% power and was able to work my way up to six millimeters a second at 100% to successfully cut this material. You can see at all these speeds, the material cut great with very little burning and no char marks. Next, we'll try some about four millimeter solid walnut. This piece is about 4.2 millimeters. The first attempt, I tried to cut it at seven millimeters a second at 100% power. It didn't get all the way through. 
So I dialed that down to six millimeters a second at 100% and the cut went perfect. The reason I tried to go a little aggressive on the cut speed on the first attempt is because I have found that usually cutting solid wood is a little bit easier than cutting plywood or MDF just because you don't have the glue and the layers in the material. If you're liking this video so far, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. The channel is continuing to grow and I look forward to creating more videos like this in the future. Liking and subscribing really helps push this content to other viewers out there and helps us to provide quality content. And last up for the solid hardwoods is some 3.3 millimeter thick white oak. This I cut at eight millimeters a second at 100% power and it cut like butter. Last up for the wood related cut testing is going to be some quarter inch white oak veneered MDF. Now MDF is a really challenging product to cut through. So for this test, I was able to consistently get through it at 3.5 millimeters a second at 100% power. And last for the cut testing is some two and a half millimeter black acrylic. Now, as you may or may not know, diode lasers normally cannot cut clear acrylic or translucent acrylics, but the opaque acrylics such as the black version will cut. Here I'm cutting this material at five millimeters a second at 100% power. I should also note that during all of my cutting tests, I was running the air assist at full power. And overall, I'm very impressed with the cutting capabilities of the Alpha. And now the final test, let's see how the Alpha handles a vector fill. This engraving was done on a piece of cypress wood at 300 millimeters a second and 100% power. During this last bit of footage, I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit so you can actually hear what the machine sounds like when it is running. And that's it. A light sanding will take care of those char marks and we are finished. So closing thoughts. I've been really impressed with how this Algo Laser Alpha 20 watt machine engraves. The small spot size creates crisp engravings and it has the power to realistically cut three, four, five millimeter hardwood, plywood, or MDF. So not only that, but this laser packs a lot for the price. For $850 currently, you get the laser, the risers, a rotary, and a honeycomb bed. That's everything someone needs to get into the hobby or to start a side hustle. Okay, so is this a business machine that's gonna replace a CO2 or an RF laser in a production shop? No, but it never claims to do that. But I will say, as someone who operates a laser engraving business with my wife, this thing does have a place. There have been a few times over the past few months where I've had to pop this thing into an enclosure to help catch up on orders. So it can be used in a business setting, at least on a small scale. All in all, I do believe that this laser is a great machine to purchase in order to get into the hobby or even to start a side hustle. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you next year.